Well, as you can tell, I'm at a rather noisy reserve, not far from home today. Uh, the sun's shining nicely, it's a lovely autumn day. That's a good question the trees and long tail kits and things like that. But today we're after fungi, and as you know, I'm a macro photographer and uh, photographing moths and invertebrates during the summer months. But the macro gear does not go away in the autumn because that's the fungal time of year. And although I'm not an expert at all, nowhere near it, I have no idea a lot of the time what I'm photographing. I just like to photograph the scene and document what I've got and you'll see that on the blog and things like that later on. So without further ado, we'll have a wee walk into the woodlands here at this wee site called Slantry Wood. It's tucked away. Dog walkers use it but not a lot of other people so the fungus should hopefully be intact when we find it uh, and not foraged or tick over. And yeah, let's see what we can find. Straight away find these guys here on the ground about 78 centimeters across quite big no idea what they are uh, partly eaten by rabbits and things like that that frequent here but yeah nice to see already another one just spotted because uh, a lot of the ivy grows around here you have to kind of look underneath that and forage a little bit just to find these but hopefully we'll find some growing out of the rotten trees and the fallen logs that are down here as well that's what we're really looking for ah just down here what are some nice ear fungus come on just in there got this fallen log nice moss surrounding it so we'll see if we can get a few shots of that. So probably a good time to start talking about the gear we're using today. Uh, and it's my normal macro setup. So we'll flip this around and let you have a look. So that's the gear for today. It's the uh, Canon R7 body. Uh, nice crop sensor mirrorless. Uh, light, really small and light. Uh, easy to carry around. On top of that is the Godox V1 Canon fit. Uh, that's a beast of a speed light. Uh, it does everything I needed to do for macro and a lot more than that. Uh, attached to that then, uh, using the RF the EF adapter, I have the old Sigma, old faithful Sigma F28 105mm macro lens. Workhorse of a lens. It's going for a long time yet. Now on the end of that, Periodically you'll see here uh, I have a fitting, this white fitting is the adapter for the poke shield which screws onto the end of the lens and gives me uh, a magnetic plate to snap on the poke shield diffuser which you can see here and in between that this wee lever you can see we pushing is a Raynox DCR250 just spotted when we're talking about gear in there is the tiniest little fungi growing probably iodine bonnets something like that but yeah they are uh, they're small let's hopefully see if we can get those this is where the dcr250 comes in really really important in there because you'll not get the scale of those uh, without that it's gonna move in see if we can get these tiny tiny ones in here Coming out nicely. Now what I'm doing here is I'm shooting multiple shots. There's two together, and I'm focusing on the first one and shooting it at f14 using the DCR250, and then I'm taking a second shot in exactly the same place and focusing on the back one, and then in Photoshop just using the the auto blend and auto stack tool, we can stack those together and get a very very simple two image photo stack bringing both those fungi into focus together, real easy. So come across this fallen tree, not a log, and 
as always with fallen stuff like this rotten logs this is where a lot of the fungi is going to grow out of and just as I looked at it thought there was nothing on it lots of these tiny little fungus are growing out of one of the it's a birch tree and they're growing out of one of the the knots on it here so we'll flip this round let you have a look there we have them no idea what these are if we do get an a positive id on them we'll drop a name in here but we'll get some photos of these looking upwards at the light some of them are absolutely tiny as well as you can see there but we try our best It's really noisy here at the minute with the cars on the motorway so I'm picking my chance in between traffic to try and give you this wee snippet. Found some candle snuff on some fallen logs yet again so uh, hopefully we'll be able to get some good shots. So just shooting this on my phone this time but stumbled across these brilliantly weird coloured earth stars wonderful little mushrooms, totally alien, a uh, bit like an earth ball on the top, puff ball, I don't know if you can see but if we, you can see some of the spores coming out there, uh, yeah these things are just weird, there's a little group on this one over here, just move this out of the way, look at that for weirdness, unbelievable, let's get some shots of these as well. So we've moved into an area here just under a sycamore tree, the rain's on yet again. We're in the middle of an amber warning for the rain, so that's going to be a bit crap. But it is what it is, uh, it's good for the fungi, not so good for the conditions to photograph in. But in saying that, as soon as I've walked in here, I have my eye on a little wax cap I'm going to photograph. And there's a bigger parasol style mushroom over there, two or three of those poking up. So we'll have a good look around under this tree. Uh, as you can see where I am, under here, uh, and see what we can see. What we can see. I suppose a good time to mention some settings that I'm shooting. Uh, I've talked about the gear, but the settings I'm shooting today, normal macro settings for my for my gear, between one over a hundred, one over two hundred, and somewhere in between there. Uh, F10 to F16. If I'm shooting with the Rainox on the end of here. I will shoot the I'll shoot at F16 to try and get all of that uh, all of that depth of field because your depth of field is so shallow with the Rainox you do need F16 although anywhere higher than that in this lens and you start to get diffraction and stuff like that so it isn't brilliant but we'll, we'll shoot F16 if we're using the Rainox and then what we'll do is we'll stack any of those that are too shallow other than that so we're in around F10 between well from F7.1 upwards and if the depth of feed is not good enough we can stack and get all that nice detail captured in there but yeah iso uh, 200 between 100 and 200 and the flash is set to uh, ettl so letting it do all the work if this was if i was stacking an invertebrate shot i wouldn't be using ettl flash because i'd want to control constantly the power of that flash and consistently but in this case with the fungi when we're using maybe only one or two shots per stack it's not going to affect it overall and we can change any of that white balance issues you get from that in uh, in post anyway so it's not such a big deal but yeah that's what we run down the settings and that's what we're using that's what i always use for fungi work for me but that's that find this guy under this sycamore tree you can see there i'll tidy up the scene a little bit and try and get a photograph of that he's got a wee chunk out of him on that side but we'll maybe be able to angle it that we don't see that so much but lovely lovely mushroom there just 
so I just spotted something tiny down in here so I'm hoping that the Osmo Pocket will focus for you in here somewhere just about there on a, a little log rotten log it's another bonnet of some description but what we can do because this is I mean, look, it's a single piece of log we can remove this from the leaf litter and we can set it up somewhere a bit more easier to get a photograph of this is a good spot up out here now with a nice sympathetic background a bit of natural light lighting it up there back lighting it we can get some photographs of this and then return it back where we had it and it takes no hurt You literally can't walk two feet here, but you find something. Just after photographing that little bonnet on the log, I was having a look just down again in the leaf litter here at some other sticks and things, and came across this bad boy with these on it. It's some sort of tiny bracket. It's hard to focus with the Oswald on that, but. Again, because it's contained on the log, we can set that up and photograph that in some detail and return it to where it was without taking any hurt. Looking forward to seeing the gills underneath these with a bit of light fired up in there to see what's going on there. That's a nice little scene there. There's a earth ball and like look like an adding bonnet and possibly some form of wax cap behind it, not sure, but three different species of fungi growing right out of the same patch of earth like that. Fantastic. A couple of earth balls to the side of it as well. Nice little scene. Not sure if we'll be able to capture it because of where it is and I'm getting severely rained on at this moment in time, but we will try, give it a go, see what we get. So, making our way back to the car, I think we're going to have to call this one a day. It's not exactly raining at the minute, but because I'm under the canopy and it's windy, it's blowing all the rain off the trees and it may as well be. Gear's getting soaked, I'm getting soaked. It's been a good few hours out in my local woods here. Uh, lots of fungi seen, far more than I'll be able to record because I've forgotten a lot of what I've seen. And uh, hopefully when the video comes out, and the shots are in and we'll be able to get a better look at those and get them ID'd so it's home for a, a proper cup of coffee feed up at the fire and uh, get some look at some of these shots thanks for watching hope you enjoy the video